Right now, I'm going to show you some ways of working with color that you've probably never seen before inside of Photoshop. This is going to enable you to get some really cool and unique color in your images. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today we're going to jump into the world of Duotone. We're going to cover two things. One, how to actually create a Duotone and then we're also going to have a look at how to use it with an RGB image. So whether you want to use this traditionally or you want to use it in a brand new way, this tutorial is going to tell you that. I know there's an old saying which is really not true is you can't teach old dogs new tricks. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to teach some new dogs some old tricks. All right, so here's an image that I put together and we'll use this for an example. This will work on any photograph, of course. So the first thing I want to do though is I just want to create a brand new document or a duplication of this document. So the way to do that is actually go to the history and you can find history under window and go down to history. And then you just want to hit this little plus. And what that will do is it'll create an exact duplicate of that image. And by doing it this way, if there's any layers or anything, they remain intact. Of course, in this example, we're not really working with layers. It's not what we're focusing on. All right, so what we want to do is we want to get this to grayscale. Before you just go and just convert it to grayscale, we're going to go into filter and we're going to go into camera raw filter. Now, the reason we're doing it this way is I don't want to just throw away all the color. I want to get a little bit of control over how this color conversion happens. So we're going to choose black and white. Okay, now we want to just change the way this color is converting. So believe it or not, the color temperature is a great way to get started with this. And so is the tint. And you can notice it changes the way these colors convert. Let's go down to the good stuff. If we scroll all the way down, we have this black and white mixer. And this is going to enable us to get this exactly how we want. Why don't we do it on image this? We're going to choose the targeted image adjustment tool. And now if I choose, say, for example, the blues and I drag down, I can darken those tones. Notice you can't go too far. You're going to get some artifacts. But I'm going to show you how to deal with those as well. Let's go here into the skin tones. We're going to darken that down as well. And so basically you're just going to go in there and just choose which colors you want lighter or darker. So we're just preparing this image. Now, as I said, I'm going to show you a little trick to get rid of these little artifacts. That's the little blocks. And a way to get rid of these is we're just going to go to add detail. And then under detail, you're going to two, see two sliders, noise reduction and color noise reduction. Let's increase our color noise reduction. I know there's no color in this image. But if you increase that color noise reduction, notice the blocky areas there. Go forward, they disappear, and now you get a nice smooth image. Great. Let's click OK to apply it. Now, if we look under the channels here, we're going to see that we have three channels, red, green, and blue. These are the color channels. Now, we're going to throw away these channels by simply choosing Image, Mode, and then under Mode, we're going to go down and we're going to choose Grayscale. Okay, the reason I went to Camera Raw first is so we could adjust how light or dark we wanted the different colors. If we just went under Image Adjustments and then we just chose Grayscale immediately, it's not going to give us that control anymore because when we do that, notice the channels, instead of being the three, red, green, and blue, now we just have one channel. Now, what we want to do is we want to apply some unique color to these areas inside the channels. So if we go under Image and we go down to Mode, this time we're going to go further. We're going to go to Duotone. Now, you're going to see the Duotone options. Now, as you can see right now, we've got a monotone, but if we click on here, you can see we have the ability to change this. If we choose Duotone, it's going to give us an additional color. Tritone is going to give us three colors, and Quadtone is going to give us four. Now, the unique thing about these is each of these colors, I can apply a specific color and I can target where I want to put that in the image. So if I just wanted to put red in the shadows or just into the highlights, I could do that. Now, I know you're going to say, well, can't you do that with color curves? Well, when you go into the color curves, you can, but you get the three channels, red, green, and blue. So you can mix those colors based on those three channels. Doing it this way, we can use a very specific color, such as a Pantone color, and we can target a very, very narrow region. 
Let me demonstrate right now. So let's choose the ink number two. We're going to click on the color swatch, and here comes our color picker. Now, say we wanted to put a color into the shadows, a warmer color, like some kind of an orange. We could go in here and we could choose, you know, the yellows or the oranges. And notice that these colors are going to start to apply to the image. Now, if you want to get a very specific color, and this can actually be printed, these can be output. Now, of course, that's optional. I'll show you how to do that. But if we go under the color, and instead of using the regular color picker, we can choose color libraries. Now, under here, we can use different color models, such as Pantone. So if you have a chip, a color chip, and you want to find that specific color, you can do that. Now, these solid coded ones are when you print that and it gets coded, uh, it becomes shiny. The uncoded ones are a flat color. You've seen those printed like that. So it puts a color coat and it's actually going to affect the way that color works. Now, if you're working on a specific color, you can go in here and dial in that Pantone color. And you can see these are all in here. And of course, you don't have to do this. You could go back just to our regular uh, color, but let's just click OK. And we're going to use this Pantone color. Now, you would want to write down this color uh, and give it to your printer to make sure they give you the proper color ink if you're doing it that way. All right, so now let me show you where this really gets good. If we click on the left hand side, you'll see there's a curve. And let me show you how this works. I'm just going to take this down and I'm going to flatten this curve. Notice immediately we just got our black and white image. That's because our first color here is black. You can change that, but I, I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, so what we want to do here is notice everything's flipped though. We've got the highlights on the left and we've got our shadows on the right. You're used to seeing it the other way around and that's because you're used to working with light. In this case, we're working with pigment. So let me show you. So say I wanted to put this new color here into the highlight areas. I could just drag up on the highlight and you can see where this little curve is, or this little scale. So I could go and I could specifically target just the brightest tones and apply that red. Let me reduce that, take it down. Once again, if we go into the shadow, watching that scale there, see is black. Let's pull it up. So we could do that. Or we could put just a little bit of that into the shadows. And notice that we can curve this in. And this just gives us a very, very precise control of where we want this color to go in the tones of the image. Let me put something warmer, like a yellowish color, into the brighter areas. So we see ink number three. Let's click on that. Let's choose a yellow color. We're not going to worry about using the Pantone colors right now. Let's just use these colors. Maybe just give it a little bit more of a yellow. Great. Let's click on the curve. And now we're going to take this down. And we just want to apply it into the highlight areas. See what we can do there? Or we can apply this curve here and then get it into a very specific region. We could choose, hey, we don't want it in the whites. We just want to apply this in some of these other regions. And notice you can click on the curve and you can pull it up. And I could apply that color just to those tones. So those are the brighter mid-tones. Look at that. So this just gives you an incredible amount of control over these colors in a way that you just can't do it any other way inside of Photoshop. Now check out my other tutorial on curves. If you don't understand how curves work, I'll link that. But let's keep going. All right, so I want to do another tone. So let's grab ink number four. And let's grab more of a, a bright yellow. And I want to hit just the highlight regions. So let's click on the curve, pull everything down, hit those highlight regions, and let's pull it down there. So what I'm doing now is where this goes higher is where these colors are applying. So we're just hitting those tones. Let me pull it up a little bit more. And notice how you can just kind of dial it in the way you want. Now, this is looking good, but it's looking a little bit flat. So why don't we click number three? In fact, why don't we click the color and we're going to go to something a little bit more orangey. There we go. And let's click on the curve. 
And notice you could put a lot of color in there. Now, notice that we're getting this posterization effect. And that posterization effect is happening because of these curves, these points. So if you can just drag these points out, notice this will make a smoother curve and it's going to reduce the amount of that posterization. Okay, we can click OK. Now, I did mention we worked with black. Let's click on here. If you wanted to reduce the amount of black in those shadows, you could pull this down and it'll give a softer tone, more of kind of a gray. And let's just kind of play around in here. And I'm just trying to decide, you know, how do I want this to go? Let's make it a little softer there, let some detail through. And we're getting some interesting coloring here inside of the image. Now you have to give them names and this is where if you were using the Pantones you wouldn't have to worry about that. That would just give the Pantone colors but we'll just call this orange for now and we'll just call this one yellow. Great. Alright so now you've applied your colors and you've got this quad tone image going on. Now there's two different ways you could go with this. One is you could convert it into RGB and just use this color and the other way is that you could print it. So what we're going to do with the first method is we're going to do a divergence where we're going to mix it with the original color and get a really cool result. But before I do, I just want to let you guys know how to do this if you were going to be printing this or sending it to a printer. When I say printing, this is not printing on your desktop printer. This is sending it off to a commercial printing press who will take each one of those colors and create a separation or a plate. Let me show you how to do that quickly. So all you need to do is under image, change the mode, go down to multi-channel. And under multi-channel, what it's going to do is it's going to create a channel here for each one of those colors. And it's going to have the name of the color there. Now, of course, if you're using the Pantone, all those Pantone colors would be there. You would then give this file to the printer and a printer will produce a plate from each one of those channels and print that and produce these colors, which can create some really nice artistic effects, especially on black and white imagery. All right, so let's look at this though, working with an RGB image and how this would work. Okay, so let me just undo this. So we're just going back to our quad tone image again, because now we want to combine it with our RGB. So what we're going to do is just click and drag up into our tab of our original image. Let's move our cursor over the middle. I haven't released yet, don't release. Hold down the shift key to maintain the position or the center and then release. And now we've dropped this on as a new layer over our original image. Now all we need to do is just reduce the opacity. And we can get a really nice blend. Now, of course, if you wanted, you could use layer masks. All you would need to do is just click on that layer mask and if there was an area that you wanted to reduce that effect, you just grab a brush, make sure we've got black as the foreground, turn opacity up, and then you could paint over the area that you want to maintain the original color. Okay, so one of the questions you may be asking is, well, why can't we just do this with a gradient map? You can get a similar result with the colors using a gradient map, but you're not going to get the control over the distribution with those curves like you can using the duotone. So there's a technique that's been around or a tool that's been in Photoshop for a long time used in the traditional way, but also used in a newer way. And I'm sure you guys are going to create some really cool things as you experiment with it. Now, I'm curious if you guys ever used duotones before, is this new? Let me know in the comments underneath. And all the way, by the way, if you guys are new here, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. It's great to have you. Happy New Year. This is my first tutorial of the year. Um, consider hitting that subscribe button and you're going to get a new tutorial from me every single week. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And I look forward to uh, Live From Lockdowns returning this Thursday. And I'm going to have more tutorials for you next week. So until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.